Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake, and this is a 2021 Land Rover Defender 90. We're here today to do something that I probably wouldn't recommend you try at home, and we're doing it for the sake of actually testing this vehicle out. You'll notice we've got my enclosed trailer hooked up to this Defender 90, and if you've been a follower of the channel, you'll remember that we tested the same trailer with a Defender 110 earlier in the calendar year. And the Defender 110 did just fine with it. It wasn't the best tow vehicle, but it was totally adequate for a trailer of this size. Now Land Rover offered us this Defender 90, which is significantly shorter in overall length and wheelbase. So of course, I had to hook the trailer up and see how it did, because it does fit within this Defender 90's tow capacity. Most people towing with the Defender 90 are not going to be pulling a big box trailer like this, but if you want to, let's see how it does. So let's talk about what this Defender 90 is, and then we'll get it out on the road and see how it behaves pulling this big enclosed trailer. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to us, please take a second and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate all the support. The more of it we have, the more fun stuff we can do with vehicles like this Defender 90 and sports cars and everything in between. So with that, on to the Defender. Like I said, this is the shorter version of the Defender. The 110 is the four-door. This is the Defender 90, which is the two-door. And like I said, Land Rover chopped a bunch of wheelbase and overall length out of the 110 to get the 90. They lost about 17 inches of wheelbase here. So the overall wheelbase length is 101.9 inches. That is not a lot of wheelbase to pull a trailer this long. This trailer is about 20 feet of box. There's four foot in the V-nose, and then there is a three foot tongue on it. So from hitch to taillights, it's about 27 feet long. That is a lot of trailer to get caught and blown around by the wind. It's also a little bit of a windy day here. So those are the conditions. Before we get into towing though, let's talk about this Defender 90, what it's rated to tow, how it's powered, and then we'll get on the road. So as far as tow rating is concerned, they offer three different engines in the Land Rover Defender for 2021. They only offered two at launch, now there's a third. So they offer a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes a hair under 300 horsepower. They offer the three liter inline six, which is in this particular vehicle. It is turbocharged, has an electric supercharger, and has a 48 volt mild hybrid system on it. It makes 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. It is absolutely adequate for the Defender 90, if not a little overpowered feeling. Then finally, if you want overpowered to the extreme, Land Rover announced they're also doing a five liter V8 in these and that will offer more power and torque. It's north of 500 horsepower. That is, I believe, available starting now-ish or early 2022. This one is the three liter, and no matter which engine you have in your Defender, the tow rating is based on the chassis. So this is the Defender 90, this is the shorter one. Every Defender 90 is rated for the same tow capacity, 7,716 pounds with 10% tongue weight, so 770 pounds on the trailer ball. Any Defender 110 is gonna be rated for 8,201 pounds, again, with about 820 pounds on the ball. They give you about 10% tongue weight, which is pretty nice. You don't often see that in some of these SUVs that are rated to tow. Sometimes they want you down at about 8%, which is not what we tend to do here in the United States. We go for 10 to 12. So regardless, 7,716 pounds, 770 pounds on the ball. And the final piece of this is payload, of course. And payload on the Defender 90 is not a lot. This one's sort of loaded and they're only giving you 992 pounds of payload. So payload includes all the people inside, all the cargo inside, and your tongue weight if you're towing a trailer. So keep in mind, if you're putting 770 pounds of tongue weight on this thing, you've only got 220 pounds left to put people and things inside. So I hope you don't have any friends or very much to bring with you. Those are your tow ratings, that's your payload. This is the trailer. Every Defender 90 and Defender 110 is gonna use the same eight-speed torque converter automatic with standard two-speed all-wheel drive. It's full-time all-wheel drive with a low and high-range transfer case, and this one has four-corner air suspension, so it can go up and down based on what you choose on the dashboard. It's got an off-road mode. Of course, these are meant for off-roading kind of more than anything, and it will give you 11 and a half inches of ground clearance in that setting. Obviously, it's a little bit less in your day-to-day -day driving, and when you hook up your trailer, you wanna make sure to disable that fancy air suspension so it doesn't try to load level as you're setting up the trailer. You can do it when you're all done, but you need to use weight distribution with a vehicle like this in particular because you want to make sure some of your tongue weight is transferred to this front axle and in general if you're towing more than 50 percent of a vehicle's rated weight you're going to want weight distribution on there so with the defender 90 you want to lock out the suspension put your weight distribution bars on then re-enable it and let it load level and it might move a little bit but your weight distribution should take care of most of it now i mentioned this trailer is about 27 feet nose to tail 20 foot box. It weighs about 6,800 pounds right now. I've got my BMW E36 race car in the back along with 
tires, spare parts, tools, all that good stuff. And we've measured the tongue weight of this trailer and it comes in around 660, 680 pounds, depending on what's in the front of it. So we're well within the tongue weight limits of this Defender 90. So let's see how it is with the trailer hooked up. So you'll notice I've got the center seat sitting up right now. It's very tall. Um, I think if you were, if you're a shorter human, you might be able to sit on this and be okay, but there's a hump in the floor here. And this is, I think this is probably fine for short distances, but I probably wouldn't want to do it otherwise. So to put it down, there's this little pull strap and it just goes right back down. And then you've got a nice armrest here and two cup holders. And then you've got some power ports back here for both front and rear seat passengers. The problem I have with this versus the center console that was in the Defender 110 that I drove is that you don't really have any storage in here. You've got a glove box and then you've got this beam that spans the width of the dash that is, you know, fine for sunglasses and your phone and whatever, but there's no real covered storage if you want to leave things in here when you're parked and, you know, have them out of sight from prying eyes. So just a consideration, there's really not a lot of space for things like that, but you do get a sixth seat if you want it or need it or think it's cool. In any case, as far as towing, I'm gonna do this before we get started because I think this trailer is gonna be a little bit squirrely and I don't wanna you know, be distracted at all. Um, Land Rover doesn't offer a trailer brake controller on these vehicles. I can't just order the vehicle with a trailer brake controller built in like some other SUVs and trucks. So I use something called a Takancha Prodigy RF. I will link to this in the description down below. You can get these on Amazon and from places like eTrailer. And this goes in line between the Defender 90 and the trailer and intercepts your braking and actuates the trailer brakes. This is the remote control for it, so you can set your boost here, and then you can squeeze this button and that will actuate the trailer brakes if you're in an emergency situation. So we'll get this dialed up right about where I want it. And again, there's not a lot of places to put this, so I'll just stick it right here. Let's go. One more thing before we go, the Safari roof, the cloth roof back here, you'll notice I've got it closed because of noise while I'm filming. Um, it's not that noisy while you're driving. You'll, you'll hear what you hear or don't while we're driving this thing. The other thing to mention here is that there's no like dedicated tow mode. So you can put the transmission in sport, but that's kind of all you're gonna get. You will not get a tow mode that like does everything to lock you out and, and get this ready to tow anything. So let's make our way out of this parking lot and see how this thing actually tows the trailer. All right, so let's talk towing with this 2021 Defender 90. Power is not a problem here with the three liter inline six. It's turbocharged, it's electric supercharged, and then it's got this 48 volt mild hybrid system, which uh, basically what it does is it kind of helps shove the engine into the power band when you really stand on it. it just kind of helps get rid of any sort of boost lag that you might have. So it's pretty easy to pull out here and you know, I'm really not concerned about power. I think if you are towing close to the maximum weight that this thing's rated to pull, you want the six cylinder and not the four cylinder. I think if you're not gonna tow with it that much or not tow very heavily, then you'd be okay with the four. And so it's worth mentioning, of course, this is a whole lot of trailer for this tow vehicle. And we're testing this to really see how it handles it, but in practical use, I would really caution you against towing something as big as what I'm pulling, even though it's under the weight limit. And that is just because an enclosed trailer like this catches the wind, whether it's a windy day or you've got a truck passing you, you know, a big box U-Haul or an 18 wheeler, it really, it wants to catch everything and, and be pushed around. And ultimately you need enough tow vehicle to combat that. So what is enough tow vehicle? Well, you can have enough tow vehicle in a couple different senses. One is just having a long enough wheelbase. Ignore everything else. If you have a really, really long wheelbase, you'll probably be okay. The other way to do it is to have a stiff enough suspension. Again, if you have a stiff enough suspension that can combat all the body roll, all the motion, you'll probably be all right. Long wheelbase and stiffer suspension, even better. The problem with the Defender 90 is that it's meant for off-roading. This is, you know, a fancy Wrangler, a fancy Bronco, at its core, that's what it's kind of meant to do. So this is a short wheelbase and it's pretty soft. And yes, it's got adaptive suspension and the air suspension and all that good stuff, but it's just, it's soft. You know, we're doing 55 right now and there are no big trucks passing me and this is fine. Where I would be very concerned is if we were on the interstate doing 65 and an 18 wheeler passed me. I don't think that would go very well. You know, I know Land Rover's put a lot of engineering into this vehicle, but you, 
you just can't beat physics in certain cases. So if you're gonna pull a trailer that's an enclosed like this, I would be much more comfortable saying do a Defender 110 because you get another 17 inches of wheelbase and I think that's just the smarter move if you're gonna be pulling a trailer like this. If you're gonna be pulling an open trailer, like a flat U-Haul trailer that you put your car on, fine, get a 90. I think it would do absolutely fine. If you're gonna pull a smaller enclosed trailer, like what U-Haul will rent you, like a six by 12, again, probably fine. It, it sits a little lower. It's got a little bit less chance of catching the wind because this is also an eight foot tall trailer. So this is really a lot for this vehicle. Drivetrain wise, I think if you're towing this much weight or more, get the six, not the four cylinder. Obviously, if you want the V8, then fine. You don't need it, but you've got it. Having the boost here helps a lot. Um, really, you know, it doesn't have to work super duper hard to get you moving it up to the speed limit. And then as far as braking and steering are concerned, both very good, you know, especially with having the trailer brakes working. I've got trailer brakes on both axles, so, you know, nothing really to worry about there. The final piece I want to mention, of course, is just how this thing is to drive without a trailer hooked up, because that's what most people are going to do. They're either going to drive it in off-road with it, or drive it and tow a little bit, or drive it and do neither of those things and just have a cool car to drive around on the street. This is pretty good. It's a little noisier than you might get otherwise having this fabric roof, just because it's fabric and not a full hardtop or uh, a glass sunroof, but you've got your options there for your roof choice. It's not absurdly loud by any means, so just worth, you know, considering. But I like the fabric roof. I think it's very cool. Um, as far as comparing it to other vehicles, you know, in its segment, the question is what is in its segment? This is basically a really nice Wrangler or Bronco competitor. Obviously, you can't take the doors off. You can't fold the windshield down. Those are both body on frame. This is unibody, but they're all meant to go off road and do pretty well at it from the factory. Where the Defender 90 excels is at street manners compared to a Wrangler. I would say compared to a Bronco, but I've driven a Bronco for about 20 minutes so far. The Bronco is ahead of the Wrangler by a bit. This is ahead of both of those. It is far more refined, far tighter everywhere. You know, your steering and your handling are much tighter than either of those based on the suspension design and the fact that it's a unibody. And, you know, it's a really nice vehicle for the sake of on-road driving more than off-road driving. I think you really want to consider how much you're going to do each of those two things and see which way you end up swayed. A lot of people may not think that a Defender, you know, it's a Land Rover, it's expensive, it's a luxury brand, sure, but this starts at 47 grand. You can build a Wrangler or a Bronco well past $47,000 and past the 66 or so thousand dollars that this one I'm driving actually costs. Is it expensive? Yes. Is it expensive compared to the competition? Eh, not necessarily. Um, where I think the Wrangler and the Bronco edge this out is on personality. This is this is cool, it is technically good, it is built to do all these things really well. The Wrangler in particular has so much more personality, but that comes at the expense of the on-road manners. The other thing I will mention, obviously if you're shopping a Defender 90, you probably really want this body style. The four-door is epically more practical. It is, it is much better for the sake of putting people in the back. It's a little, little tight to get back there. Once you're back there, there's enough space. And uh, the, pr the problem is that on the Defender 90, there's this big metal beam that runs across the floor. So even when you have the back seats folded, you don't have a flat load floor to put anything. That's kind of an odd thing. It's probably for chassis structure, you know, stability, tightness, whatever, but really kind of a bummer. Uh, the 110 does not have that. Overall, this is a fine tow vehicle. I think it is absolutely good enough if you're going to be doing an open flatbed trailer. If you've got a trailer that isn't enclosed like this, I would just really hesitate to recommend it. I would much prefer seeing a Defender 110 towing a trailer like mine instead of a Defender 90. It's doing it, it's fine, but like I said, this is a, you know, only very lightly windy day and I've got no one really around me that can create a bunch of wind wake and I'm not going 65, 70 miles an hour. So for the sake of everyone's safety, we're not gonna go on the interstate and do that because I really think it would be sketchy at best. All right, and that is it for this towing review of the 2021 Land Rover Defender 90 with my stupidly large for this truck enclosed trailer. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube and turn on that notification bell. If you'd like to follow us on other social media channels, we can be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at OutMotorsports. We'd love to have you join us over there. And if you would like to connect with other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, head over to OutMotorsports.com. We have a whole community over there and we would love to get to know you. 
Until next time, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.